Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Welcome back to Let's Talk Business. Uh, this is a business talk show, as I told you up at the, at the start, like no other, unique to South Carolina. And if you are listening on 94.5 The Answer, welcome. Maybe you're checking out a podcast or maybe you're just watching our videos on YouTube. Regardless, thank you for being here. Our first guest, uh, our next guest actually, is Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons is the owner and CEO of Thrive Business Operations. They specialize in providing fractional assistance to companies in the form of chief operating officers. Bill, welcome. Well, thank you for, for having us. We're excited about uh, this new venture. Well, thank you. I'm excited about it, too. And I'm excited to talk to you about this because fractional executives, it's been a thing for quite some time, mm -hmm. but it seems that it has picked up speed over the course of the last number of years. I don't know. You can tell me how long that is, but I'm assuming that part of that is a result of COVID and people having different work environments and maybe working remotely. How about it? Yeah, I agree. I think in the marketplace, the fractional space was really kind of led over the past couple of decades by fractional CFOs, chief financial officers. Yes. A lot of CPAs and accounting firms, bookkeeping firms brought that to the marketplace. And now over the last few years, to be able to see other people taking their experience and their competency out to the market and bring that to you right. know, companies at an affordable rate. That's a good way to look at it. So let's talk about your team for a minute. Uh, how many people are we are we talking here? Yeah, on our team right now, we have 11 uh, that are spread around the country uh, that take on various roles of what we call uh, fractional COOs and then business function experts. We do have some key people on our team that take certain areas of a business like sales and HR, as you mentioned, right. and uh, data where we can be the expert on your team when that is needed. Right. So, yeah, the, those other fractional executives that, that I alluded to could potentially, depending on the organizational structure, fold up under a COO umbrella. Yeah. So the guys that you have, not gender specific, but the guys that you have, uh, have to be able to do a whole lot of different things. Yeah. So uh, we operate on what we call the nine functions of a business, and it's nine squares. And at the center of that square, we believe operations belongs. Right. And it touches all the other areas of the business. So a, a, a quality chief operating officer in the fractional state that we bring into a company is going to make sure that the strategic efforts of all of those areas of the company are aligning with the overarching direction of the company. Right. Got it. So um, fractional executives, I just think that, um, well, let's talk about why they're so much more popular today. Um, some companies, and I suppose you're probably working primarily with smaller companies, maybe small to medium size. Is yeah, but, you know, our, yeah, our ideal client is a privately held, rapidly growing company that's going to be somewhere between five and 50 million okay. that we serve above and we serve below. But okay. that's kind of our, our niche. Right. And why is a CEO looking for a fractional CEO, especially if it's a company that brings in 25 or 30 million? It seems like that you might you might want a full time guy there. Yeah, it, it's really about quality of execution, and sometimes it's, you know our, our mission statement is to serve people, solve problems. A lot of times we will talk to CEOs who they've had a bad experience with a COO, and that could be for multiple reasons on both sides of the coin. But ultimately, we become a lower risk opportunity because um, you're not making the large investment and then have personality clashes. You know, our goal is to you know creatives and visionaries, they just want things executed. Yeah. Right. right. And, and finding a way to build that relationship is important. So I'm assuming that someone can come to you and and say, hey, look, I'm looking for somebody to help me at one day a week hmm. or two days a week. Uh, uh, what what does the fractional part of this service really look like? Yeah, our, our model doesn't uh, you know do it that way. Our, our model does it that is, is we are going to focus on what we call quarterly sprints. We want to help run your uh, company 90 days at a time. And through our strategic planning process, we're going to identify what the priorities and objectives of the next 90 days are. And that becomes the scope of work. So rather the conversation being how many days and hours are you going to work for us? The conversation is around what are the results we're going to get for you in the next 90 days? We, and it's fractional. We can't do everything, but we can do anything. we got to decide what the anything is going to be. And so our strategic planning process allows us to work with the business owner to agree on what that scope is going to be. So is this person that you're providing them, are they, are they full-time 
uh, with them. I, I know we're using the word fractional, but it sounds like it could be somewhat a full-time effort for some period of time. Yeah, well, it, it depends on the need, you know. So yeah. we, we have, uh, you know, kind of our outline and our template, but we don't want to be cookie cutter for each client. We want to we want to be able to customize for their specific needs. And so, again, we're not looking at, we're not having conversations around full-time, part-time. We're having conversations around accomplishments and results. Uh, but it is a fraction of the time. It is a fraction of the cost. And probably more importantly than time is the money part of it, where we want to work with you and be somewhere between 50 and 60% of what a full-time COO would be. Right. And, you know, I, I suppose one of the advantages of going to a fractional executive would be that you don't have the expense of employing that person. Absolutely. You know, from an insurance perspective or a 401k benefit kind of thing. Yeah, we reduce a lot of risk and we reduce a lot of cost for you. Right. Sure you do. Okay, before we go, why don't you give me one success story? Oh wow, there's so many to choose uh, from. Sure uh, you know, one of the you know one of the stories we love to tell is you know working with a business owner who was a second generation business owner um, and had worked with the company for well over 20 years, but felt he had everything in his head. And every time the company was going through a growth spurt, it just demanded more people rushing to them and asking the same questions over and over and over again. Yes. And he said, Bill, I've never been able to extract from my mind all the things that are there so that I can replicate it with our team. And I said, well, you know what? You're talking to the right person because our company, you know, we're experts at extracting from you what nobody else is able to do. And one of the things we were really able to do was pull from him over a series of conversations what were eight stages of how they begin to start their services and deliver their services and be able to not only identify that, but work through the steps it takes all the way down to standard operating procedures. So now he has a clear training track of what's in his brain of how his company runs. Not only does that make the team more efficient, but it makes the company more valuable. Because now sure. when you go to sell the company, sure. you're selling a process, not just your book of business. Good stuff, Bill. Thank you. Guys, that is Bill Simmons, CEO at Thrive Business Operations, and I appreciate him being here, and I appreciate you being here. But let's take a quick break. We're only going to be gone for a few seconds. We'll be right back.